Here we are. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the uh, Georgetown Finance and Advisory Board meeting of December 18th. We're here with Mike Farrell to get a tutorial on our employee post employment oh, no. benefits. So, Mike, I'm going to move so that I can look yeah, at the screen. Let me get this into uh, this the oh, sorry. slideshow oh, wow. mode. Ed, thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, tonight, this this uh, other post-employment benefits, uh, or otherwise known as OPEB by its acronym, it's a cl complex subject. And I'm the first to tell you I'm not qu totally qualified for uh, explaining all the real you know, the actuarial side of this, and, and it's heavy actuary stuff. Um, I know enough to be dangerous. I know enough to be, to, uh, you know, at least understand the basics of it. And that's all I want to go over tonight, uh, just to get everybody. So when you hear the terms and, um, you know, you have a better than average uh, grasp of, of the, situation and the, and the problem. Uh, later this uh, winter, I plan to have the actuary who uh, every two years were required by, by GASB, and I'll explain that for those of you who don't know what GASB is, is we, we have to have a uh, actuary uh, valuation of our post-employment benefits. Um, it's, and I, I'd be happy to, uh, to share a copy of this, but it's, um, as I said, it's pretty heavy stuff. Um, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll send it out to, send it out to the members uh, and, um, you know, you can, review it and if you have questions uh, which I can't answer I can I know where to get the answers too who did the town town study uh, this is done by a, a firm called Primoris um, Siegel did our first one in uh, 2008 and then uh, and we paid a pretty penny uh, Primoris uh, I found out from other colleagues were were doing the same work for far less. So uh, we've been uh, going with Primoris, uh, a firm out of Connecticut. But anyway, as an introduction, we want to talk about other post-employment benefits. Uh, what are they? Uh, they're retirement benefits, everything <coughs> but the pension. And in our case, we provide retirees with health insurance, dental insurance, and life insurance. Um, and and that, that, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, so GASB, that stands for the Government Accounting Standards Board. And they, uh, they were formed in 1984 to provide um, to establish standards of financial accounting and reporting for state and local government entities. Um, and every so often they come out with a standard. And in this case, this was standard or statement number 45 on, on other post-employment benefits. They're up to in the 60s now. They, yeah. yeah, they, they They've gotten, it used to be, you know, for uh, uh, quite a number of years, these financial statements were few and far between, but uh, they've got a real activist uh, board now and members, so um, they, they churn them out, uh, you know, probably at least one a year now. <coughs> um, uh, why was statement 45 on OPEB accounting uh, accounting by governments necessary. Um, 
prior to Statement 45, governments typically followed a pay-as-you-go accounting approach in which the cost of benefits is not reported until the employee retires. The problem is uh, this approach is not <clears throat> comprehensive, only revealing a limited amount of data and failing to account for costs and obligations incurred as governments receive employee services. So it's, you know, we weren't fully reporting, um, you know, we were making promises uh, but not funding them. And that's how we end up with the unfunded, uh, the large amount of unfunded liability. Uh, what does Statement 45 accomplish? It, uh, now that it's been implemented, many governments will, re will report for the first time annual OPED costs and their unfunded actuarial accrued liabilities for these past services. The, the purpose is it will foster improved accountability and a better foundation for informed policy decision about the level and type of benefits provided and potential methods of financing these <coughs> benefits. I uh, want to go through a few terms. Uh, we, I mentioned pay as you go a couple times. Basically, it's just paying your benefits on a cash basis. Uh, with no money set aside for the uh, future liabilities. Uh, and that's how we do it right now. Uh, and frankly, that's how almost everybody does it right now. It's only about, well, <coughs> about 5% of the uh, uh, municipalities and states in the country are actually funding their OPEB liabilities. Uh, we're and we're further ahead than a lot of those 90 other 95 percent that are that aren't we're almost getting to the uh, five percent um, to understand how they calculate the liability you have to know these other terms too they talk about normal costs that's the value of the benefits in accrued by current employees um, for their future benefits. Uh, so uh, when you're calculating this, uh, 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 based on what I talked to with our um, actuary, our current employee, we should be adding an additional $4,000 a year, funding an additional $4,000 a year per employee to pay for their future uh, retirement benefits. So when you start multiplying that by the number of employees for over a 30-year period, <coughs> now you're talking some, some real money. And not to mention all the employees that came before them that we never put money away for, too. They, they calculate that in, in another way. Um, but then, okay, so then that's your normal cost. That's for the current employees. The expected employer contribution is for the retired people, the people that are retired already. And we have to pay for their, you know, the employer's share of the health insurance, um, and it's the same as the share for the you know, current employees. We pay 60% <coughs> of their benefit, um, and, and we pay also for um, their... Excuse me, is that just for retired people? <coughs> or is that all the time? Every day, it's it's current. We pay sixty percent of the of current common. employees and sixty percent of all the retired people, okay. and retired people outnumber the current people. That's 
the other problem. Um, so um, then the unfunded accrued actuarial liability, AA, UAAL, is just the accrued liability minus the actual value of assets. And most towns and cities have zero for the value of assets. We, we're, I said we were a little bit better. We have $50,000. We, we <coughs> but, but we are paying for uh, retirees right now. We, so are, we are putting that in. We are a pay-as-you-go right. funded right. system. That's their cost every year. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'll, I'll show you some actual numbers. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Now, just just one more question, everybody. Do the do the retirees pay forty percent as well? They yes. Do? Okay. All right. Um, and there's one other major term, uh, and this is the 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 big one. It's called the ARC, the town's ARC or annual required contribution. And it's made up of of two two numbers. One is the normal cost, <coughs> which we just explained. And then the, the big cost is the amortization payment, uh, which is like a catch-up payment for all the past retirees. We should have been saving money for them when they were, you know, this is prior to 2008. The 2008 is when the world changed as far as OPEB is concerned. <coughs> And uh, so anybody who is already retired, we're, we're paying as you go. Um, but they, they uh, the, uh, the standard 45 said we have to uh, figure that out for over the next 30 years. And, and that becomes a huge number actuarially. Speaking, we have to f figure out the time value of that money over that 30 year period. So, with all those different uh, definitions and terms, uh, I just want to look at this spreadsheet. So, these are our actual numbers. So, our normal cost. We should be paying $837,391 a year to fund current employees in their retirement years. And our makeup um, valuation is $1,003,371. So our, our uh, arc um, is that $1.8 million. So if we were fully funding our OPEB, we, that's the number we need to hit. <coughs> now, there, there are some adjustments to the arc. And... Um, Let's just jump down to those, the beginning year net OPEB and the ending year OPEB. If we were doing this, uh, you know, paying our ARC since 2008, <coughs> we'd have, we should have a net OPEB uh, value of $4.9 million. So if we had that in a fund, they would... Credit, they're, they're crediting us with 4% interest. Uh, in today's uh, economy, that's, that's impossible to find. Um, but they're, amateur, they're looking at this over, average it out over a 30-year period. So 4% uh, is, is, is the number that all actuaries use. So 4% um, of that $4.9 million is the accrued interest figure of 198000 So we have to 
since we're not getting that interest, we'd have to make it up if you're following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they do two other, uh, one actuarial um, adjustment and an amortization adjustment um, to the, the normal cost in the, A, the UAAL. Um, and, you know, it depends upon the number of retirees. It depends on the cost of the benefits. Uh, they do have figures, like right now, they're using an escalating factor for health insurance at 6% in, 19, in 2013. And then in 14 and on, they're going to be using 5% as an escalator factor. Uh, just as an aside, uh, and our actual history has been a lot better than that over the last few years. Matter of fact, we haven't had an increase in health insurance premium in almost four years. Um, and I just uh, learned we, our renewal for our MedEx, which is the, uh, the uh, Medicare supplement that we pay, uh, along with the um, Medicare prescription, um, that the new rate is dropping by 18.8 percent. Wow! Uh, so I must have died. <coughs> maybe. <laughs> well, what's happened was the the, the cost of uh, the real savings in that. Uh, figure is with the uh, prescriptions. It went down uh, from 144 a month to 94 a month. That's a, a huge... Per, per person, per retiree? Yes. Wow. And, and well, and then 40 and 60 percent yeah. payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and even the, the medics dropped uh, from 199 to 184. You know, so the... the that's going to help immensely with our with this with our unfunded liability. It will. <coughs> Mike, uh, I got a question. Now, when you yes. said the interest of four percent, I thought the OPED could go into a trust where you can where because we, we have the light department has the OPED trust, and we're doing better than four. And well. Because we, I know we don't have any money. So. Yeah. Well, if if you if you start funding it, the actuaries will use a seven percent discount rate. Yeah. Okay. So it's it, that, so it's basically the if you do fund it, yeah. if you do start putting money that because that's what the idea behind the last study that I was mm -hmm. involved in was, you start making some money, and then the money you're making will reduce. Your right. bottom line, and that's that's why they'll double, you know, almost double the uh, <coughs> the discount rate when yeah. doing their actuarial uh, figures. Okay. So we 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 have to add in the interest we're not earning, uh, which is the 198 adjusted actuarially for other factors, and I mean those and those are negative numbers. Uh, they could be positive, and it could crank the arc even higher. So the um, annual OPEB costs, or, or in this case we could also call it the net arc figure, is 1.469 million. Um, now our actual ex contributions that we pay every year uh, total the 979 369 that's that's what we pay but we're but we're still as you can see short by four hundred and ninety thousand dollars and that rolls in to the net OPEB uh, thing on the bottom there yeah. deficit what's contributions of 979 normal cost of 837 what's that so we are funding more than the normal, more than the normal cost, more than what the people working today are. So we are kind of net ahead. 
we are for the for, for the, the moment. moment. Right. And and I, I did discuss that with the actuary, and he said, <clears throat> if that were to continue for another you know 15 years, you know it would also you know the the, the unfunded liability would start you know coming down, and you know if it continued past that, we we you know maybe in 40 years, uh, you know, get it in balance, uh, but... Um, and hope there's no inflation. <clears throat> right, and they do, they they, do they calculate... They inflation, isn't it? <clears throat> they do they have an inflation be. factor in there, but I, I... It's usually very, very low, though. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, that's, that's how it happens on an annual basis, basically. <clears throat> but what we've run into, um, oh, um, I thought I had other slides. The big number that we <coughs> all hear about, though, is what what is the value of all the accrued benefits to date. And that's that's the big scary number. And right now it's twenty three million seven hundred and ninety two thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars. <coughs> so how do we uh, how do we fund that? Um, uh, well, th th what are the key assumptions used to estimate that? I think I already mentioned that. They, they, they use the cost, you know, they estimate the escalation in uh, um, health insurance costs, and they try to figure out, the, you know, when people are going to retire. If they're, they're going to retire when they, they are supposed to, or <clears throat> when it comes to OPEB uh, benefits, usually it, it's the opposite of pension. The longer you're in the pension plan, the more you make. Well, once you hit, right now, once you hit 10 years, you're vested and you are guaranteed lifetime health insurance when, when you hit retirement age. You don't right. get it right, right then and there. But uh, so it, OPEB is the exact opposite of, of pension. The, the early retirees get a better deal, um, but then they have to weigh the difference in um, in, in the pension. Um, <clears throat> and we've already talked about how much is accrued each year. I, I skipped to that. Uh, um, that's that's the arc cost and. Um, so the, the the bottom line, the last thing we wanted to talk about then uh, is you know, how do we solve the unfunded liability problem? <coughs> uh, integrating it with Medicare, we've already done that. And that just means uh, it, if somebody retires, if one, once somebody hits 65, whether they retire or not, you're on Medicare if you're working for us, or if you're a retiree from for us, we automatically switch you over to Medicare, and and supplement the Medicare right. with the MedEx, right. and uh, you know you end up with basically the same type of coverage, but the MedEx is only costing, uh, as I said, uh, you know, two hundred. It'll be it was three hundred forty-four dollars a month, as compared to uh, over seven hundred dollars a month for a family plan. So, if you have a husband and wife on you know, retired, uh, you know, they can't stay on the HMO Blue Blue Cross Blue Shield anymore. The seven hundred is the total cost. That's split sixty forty again, right? If yes. Okay. How just uh, <clears throat> these people that go on Medicare? They haven't been paying into Medicare, right? Well, how does that work? <laughs> that, well, that, that's the exception, Jim. 
and, and you know, you'll find that a lot with the teachers. They have never been paying into Medicare, yeah. so they do have to stay on the... Oh, is that right? So it, yeah. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. So it is only people that have... You have to be eligible for to, Medicare. For Medicare. Yeah, you have to have oh, enough I quarters see. earned. Otherwise, you, you stay on... I, th um, I thought all the new employees have a Medicare tax taken out of their pay. So they are, they are somebody that's a new employee. Oh, is that right? So they're taking out the Medicare. <clears throat> they're taking it out. They take out a Medicare tax. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. Oh. They, they do. But I don't know when that started. Back, did that start in 84, uh, back in when this came around? Or? Uh, um, it probably did. That was part of the, uh, you know, integrating it with Medicare. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the other solution is pre-funding, but that's not uh, very viable right now because we'd have to be paying the ARC, the adjusted ARC, uh, which would be at least right now an extra half a million dollars a year, uh, and in so, some adjusted years it, it could be the full ARC, which is, you know, 1.8 million. So uh, where we would get 1.8 million dollars out of our budget, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, you can change the, the cost sharing. The um, law allows reti the retiree cost sharing by law has to be at least 50-50. So we're richer than 50-50, we're 60-40. We could go down to 50-50. Uh, I don't think anybody's proposing that. Uh, it, 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 you know, when people retire and they think they expect this is they're going to pay the yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, with uh, health plan design, which is the next, you you have to treat everybody equally. So if if our employees are 60-40, our retirees have to be 60-40. Yeah, that's. Uh, really so we'd have if we're going to put the retirees down to 50%, the employees would have to go down to 50%. Um, the other, you know, unfunded uh, liability, you know, partial solution is plan design change with the health insurance. It helped, and we're going through that now. It will help reduce the um, annual increases, uh, the, you know, the first couple years we should see a, a decrease in premiums so we'll you know start bending the cost curve as they say uh, reducing the increases every year um, uh, but that you know eventually the costs of uh, health care are going to you know they'll straighten the co cost curve out yeah the, the other one the other solution are legislative changes. The uh, state of Massachusetts has had a uh, OPEB commission. Uh, they have a final report that I think it came out in, in two, I know it came out in 2013. Uh, but it's, it's, it's very political and you're not going to get people to agree on it. I mean, it was, it was the, yeah, you know, they're talking about, you know, changing the 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 fifty fifty care the share. They're talking about making um, retirement. You know, instead of getting it in twenty years, you have to, uh, ten years. You have 20. to raise it to twenty. Um, Prorating. Pro yeah, uh, by years of service. Um, you know, depends on who's, uh, you know, whose ox they want to gore, uh, and, you know, they're not up for anything like that. Um, so I don't know when and if a legislative solution is going to occur. The only good thing uh, out of this whole thing is we are not required to fully fund the, uh, the OPEP. Doesn't, not at this moment. Yeah. Right. 
but they they're going to have to do something really uh, amazing, like get rid of uh, get rid of um, you know two and a half or, or or something like that because we you you know local government would be wiped out. It it would seem to me that the pension is just like this as well. It's a tsunami coming at us, and it's only a matter of time before it goes over us. That this is real money. This isn't, you know, you, you're nibbling it, it. You're doing the best that you can to nibble at it, <coughs> but the basic problem is still there. And yeah, you're right, I, Ed. Yep. And I envision <coughs> 10 years, 15 years down the road, when we're looking at the budget, where we're, we're paying mostly for the schools, we're paying mostly to pay for this and pay for the pensions. But the, pe the pension system, the pension system itself has got funding. It has got a fund of monies that's paying. And the, employee, the employees are put in there and they've made it. Right. We don't. And, then, we, and un, then the town funds the difference once a year. Un, unlike OPEB, we are required to fully fin fund pensions. And, uh, you know, when returns are not, you know, at the right levels, then we do have to, like Wayne said, we do have to kick in. The employees now, I think we're being charged an extra 2%, uh, you know, to, to as a catch-up. My only point is that, you know, I've, I've heard what you've done, and you do a great job in terms of managing and mitigating. But it seems like, you know, we're very fortunate right now because you've, you've been able to, to keep the insurance costs lower except for a couple of hiccups. You've been able to keep the, you know, a lot of these things at bay. But you're like the, you're like the boy with the dike. Sooner or later, you're not going to have enough fingers. Um, you're probably right. Not unless we get some major... Tax increases? Re relief. Yeah, well, that's yeah. not going to happen. Re you know, it, well, um, maybe if the state returned our uh, funding level to where... It, used to be I think it's we got cut I, I just saw the number this week it was oh, it was very a very large number something like 46 percent or something like that really? lost revenue isn't isn't the premise of this whole exercise is if we had put this money away if we had this money and we put it away doesn't it say that by the time these people retire, we don't have to pay anything? It's almost like Social Security, that the money's in there, and that money will pay for their health care. But That's, we're already paying for, for retiree health care. If, if we started new tomorrow and hired all new people, and they yeah. got for 30 years, we'd have the money to pay, and we wouldn't have to fund it. We wouldn't that. have to fund it. But the problem is we, but we are this, funding it. We are funding it. Yeah. And we've but paid it twice. Yeah. Well, we'd be paying it twice. That's well, right. You know, if the that's, that's what I have. Three retirees for every active person, you're paying it, you know, four times. Right. One of the things I thought about when these, this, I first went through this thing, um, we should, any new employees after such and such a date, we should take, you know, if it's $4,000, that should be put in a, do, do the new ones now, and we'll catch up. The, the old ones will eventually, they Go away. <laughs> that was a nice one. Yeah, but that was a good way to say it. Yeah, but you, you know what it's like, though? It, it's like when you're younger and you have kids. Right. And you want to put all the money aside for the college education. But you know what? You never catch up. Because yeah. life is life. Yeah. And, you know, you, you have to... It's it just it, almost impossible to do that. Yeah. Mike, what is the uh, soonest uh, someone's age can be to start to pension and retiring how many years uh, um, need or? well depends on mass if, if your public safety it's different from teachers and it's different from you know non-public safety they're all a little bit different uh, the cops I think can retire in 25 years some of them and I think the state police have their own you know it might be 20 years um, the regular average employee, I believe, is 30 years uh, and age of 55. Um, 
otherwise um, it's, the, it's the regular people are 62 and have 30 years of service. 62 and okay 30 yeah. um, you got you got to have you, your age is affected your, your age comes into it you know, in the years of service that was one of the problems I was reading about is the time before they go on Medicare is we're funding that period yeah. of time yes absolutely but most of your employees who have 30 years service or 20 20 years of service probably aren't going to they're going to be on medic won't be able to do that because they haven't funded any medic they haven't paid into medicare i don't know what year i know that none of the teachers do i know that much the new teachers will be paying into the medicare they will yeah okay and i just don't know what year <coughs> what then when that started i want to i want to say 10 years ago but yeah i could be wrong yeah i'm i i I can find out for you, though. So, Mike, is is the answer a tax increase? If you develop a <coughs> comprehensive plan in order to pay backfill this, um, well, because you you right now you're doing sleight of hand. Yeah. Well, nobody's gonna self. Well, I'll tell you what some of the other more affluent towns. You know, they, they borrowed money and fund fully funded. Really? The, the town of Wellesley. Wow. They I they mean, bonded I, their this is unfunded liability and their Wellesley. They have bad feelings about you this. Know, and, and not, at, you know, at 2 3%, it's not, it's not required. Yeah. Uh, you know, no. interest but on a 20-year bond, that's, that, that is a possibility, anyway. but so not for us because we've got school bonds and things like that. It doesn't make sense for a bank could to be fund the something that they could raise, raise the money themselves. Have to pay for that, but yeah. 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 I mean, to pay your debt. To pay your debt. To pay your debt. Yeah. No, it sounds like the U.S. government put, put some money but, aside. But, you know, they, they, they quickly the found themselves falling behind, too. Yeah, and that is the thing. So you're, you're, you're trying to you're trying to put a nail into Jello every yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And everything yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And if I if I had a, a solution to the problem, I I guess the teachers, they're all young. Um, the I, I I just don't have that. Uh, you know, a solution will probably be forced upon us by by the state and or federal government. That's a thought. That's a thought. Uh, and That's it's got to include additional revenues from the state or or the feds that because we we can't do it ourselves we're we're not the only ones right i i mean when i say we i'm because talking about the, local government i think the 60 40 is very generous i was up in maine and we didn't no one went underneath 80. it was always like 80 20 85 15. oh yeah um as far yeah. as the, the employee the employer was paying uh, the school actually at one point oh, was yeah. 90 10. yeah the employer 90 uh, yeah oh 60 40 is very good i yeah. i don't think that there are many places that are any better are there than 60 40. there's there's just a couple 50 50s really yeah they're, they're starting yeah but you know we've been we, not, that was we, really we've good. been 60 40 for quite a while yeah. we were one of the first to drop that low yeah we went up that high it used to be 50 50. oh it was 50 was it? 50 at one point oh really we went up 60 <laughs> oh <laughs> i didn't know that Is either that, the same for the that was way all? before my time yeah. I yes. been here a while. yes <laughs> so what we're looking at is unsustainable yes a week. absolutely correct um Mm, just yes, doing the uh, yeah, well, yeah. you know, if we put fifty thousand dollars away or a hundred thousand dollars away in a trust fund, you know, in in ten years that will equal one year's arc. You know, <laughs> does not. Yeah. Know. Where like, where is that fifty? Is that does that fifty show up in these numbers? It didn't because we just started that. Uh, right. Uh, actually, the 50 was just put in last spring's town meeting. We created mm -hmm. the, the trust the year before that, um, so it, it hasn't shown up in this right. okay. uh, calcul in these uh, valuations. It's not going to be a very big number. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it won't. Oh, we'll five million in there, probably. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So is that going to cause a shifting of priorities in the budget? I mean, you're tied down with the schools. You're tied down with so many different things. You don't have that much flexibility. Well, that's why un until they say we can't do the pay-as-you-go, we're going to go pay-as-you-go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's right. We have no. That, we, we have to. Yeah. Until and and we may get swamped change. by that too. Yeah. So you know, we you should, but but we are doing pay as you go. And if they want us to change the system, then somebody's got to do something. I mean, they just can't well, tell we you could to do flip pay over. as you go, but maybe put money aside for Different the side. estimated increase per year, maybe. Yeah. Or you know what I mean? Like Wayne Wayne said that that you know have the new employees pre-fund their, their post-employment retirement benefits. So in 30 years, you got it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take you 30 years, but right now... There's no better plan than that way. Uh, that, <laughs> better. Yeah. yeah. Um, we need more revenue. Yeah. Uh, but how can you get more revenue from a town when, we, as you say, we've got the bonds now for the schools? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, we're not going to get it from the town. We, we we're going to have existent. we're going to have to get it from the state. You know. Yeah. If, yeah, but you got how many other cities and towns are going to be crying the same? Oh, time? everybody's going to be the same way. Oh, no. And where are they going to get it from? Uh, they're going to have you know, one way is if uh, you know the economy returns and everybody gets back to work, our our uh, income tax payments are going to you know be uh, a lot higher uh, collection. But they've got automatic de-escalation clause in the income tax yeah, too. Yeah, happens. This, it's it's going to cut, you know, at 0.25 percent or something like yeah, that. I, I, so you could be potentially the best course of action is if the state takes over everything, as opposed to individual cities and towns trying to do this. Um, that's a good point. If if they insist on us getting away from cash and going to a, a pre-funded system, they need to have to do that, just like they do with the, they're, they're the teachers' ones, retirement they're system. They're the only ones that can that, raise that the have money. the resources and yeah. the, yeah. Yeah, because we, yeah, well, there's we no way prop, we're going to do We've got anything. Prop 2, and that's why I said the only, yeah. you'd have to get rid of Prop 2 and a half before and we even, even thought about it. And you couldn't it. ask people to pay that kind of thing. And, and how many times do we go around Prop 2 and a half? Yeah. So the net result is ending there, there really isn't a two and a half. Well, this town not not, not many times. We, I we, mean, for capital we have. I mean uh, that that in and itself is a way to fund it. You if you did an uh, OPEB override, you know, for the arc, and and uh, but after the first year. There's, there's nothing saying it has to go to the ARC. Right. Yeah, yeah, you could go into oh, the we, general you know, fund. Yeah, we, we, exactly. So. That's a, yeah, no. I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to suggest, make a statement as far as what I think the people in the town might say. That in the private sector, 92% of all businesses do not do anything for their employees. Okay? Nothing. My wife works for a health insurance company and they don't even offer it. <laughs> they don't offer health insurance? No, they don't offer health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they so don't that, do that, pensions that, either. That, oh, they do pensions. A lot of them got rid of pensions. Oh, yeah, for, oh, for 401ks. 401ks. They, yeah. they contribute to 401ks in a yeah. lot of cases, but maybe not even that. Yeah. You know, They just allow you to set one up. So General I, Motors I, just said, here. Yeah. They gave it to the union. Well, they gave they them gave the, they gave them a gazillion dollars and said yeah, yeah, that they had one-time payment, yeah. and now we don't have any yeah. pension liability. It's yeah. just a, I, I feel that's going to be people's arguments. Yeah, changing the pensions, the, you're changing to change the pension system, what you're talking about, you know, well, so the retirees that one. they aren't going to have be able to get better medical benefits, and you're going to be facing uh, a, a different. You know, employee when you sit down at the negotiation table in terms of salary salary yeah because there are towns and there's what 40 or 50 towns in mass that don't provide any of this uh any of this 10 of them don't any any of them 
40 of them don't do the spouse's benefit package. They probably never have. But you know, though, the, the, the fact is that we're a small town, and we're not a big city where you see profligate waste everywhere. I mean, they've cut and cut and cut and cut in this no, town. I, I mean, it's not what I believe in. It's, I'm just making a statement. No, no, yeah. I, I understand you know? what you're saying, yeah. And I, I, I wouldn't have... Because I, we might have to cut essential services. Might cut police officers, teachers, or whatever. No, I, I think Ed's right. I don't think that it makes any sense for us because it's a change in system, really. I mean, we are paying for it right now, and we may have to pay more in the future, which we should be aware of, but that's a total change in the system, going to a prepaid, just like Social Security. And we, to Ed's point, we can't do that. There's no way we can. There's no way anybody can. And borrowing money to think about that, that is the worst idea on the planet. How many I people that make out there are the bankers? Um, yes. Yeah. And the actuarial people telling you <laughs> how and why and when. So, so do you get much sleep at night? I do. I sleep very well. Because <laughs> uh, there's... You, you pass along the night to <coughs> everybody else. Well, I, I know it's there. And... and Plus, you, you just have to have the, the right kind of uh, makeup to do what I do. Anybody in municipal management, you, you just got to leave it, leave it at home. Oh, leave well, it, let's leave it in the office. Oh, yeah. So the, we went to a, like a uh, workshop, me and Mike and Sandy, and she went to the OPEG uh, she did. workshop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, they had strategies that they went over. Did any of them, are they all that we already mentioned? Or? That, those are about it. The ones I listed, there were five of them. There, there was one that said, if you put a dollar or a thousand dollars, start putting money away. And, that's, and we've done that. That's the trust. You know, we put 50,000 away. I think we uh, should be Hopefully, careful. you know. You know, it'll be up to you and the selectmen to decide how much we put in this. Yeah. You know, you you got to be left to put in. Yeah, well, you you know, you know, we talked about the uh, the free cash um, policy where we put you know up to twenty five percent in uh, capital, twenty five percent into, and we didn't have to do it this year. 25% in the stabilization because we're at the 5% uh, level. So as long as we stay there, you can put that up to 25%, uh, you know, whatever you don't put in stabilization, put it in OPED, um, you know, and start putting away a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. That's a lot of money out of the budget. Yeah, it's, you can't. That. Look at look at this year. We're going to be we're going to be very happy at the end of this year that we have free cash because of all the snow we're getting right now. I bet he's he's already buzzed through all of his money. I bet. Well, yeah, because we only give him ninety four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't take long. It doesn't to go take long that. to buzz through that. He, he, he right. probably That's bought not a pay as we go. <laughs> it is. Yeah, he, he probably I know, I know. Uh, spent That's that true. in salt. <laughs> Well, anybody have any other questions for Mike? I, I know that I would. Why don't you send those uh, reports out to everybody? I will. Um, I, I, and, and I think we ought to have a serious strategic. I, I just, again, to Ed's point, this is a total change in system, and I don't know why we would want to even think about doing it ourselves. You know, to go from paying as you go to, to putting the money aside so that you don't have to pay anything in the future. I mean, that's like creating Social Security. And I, just, <coughs> I don't see how we could ever do it. We don't have deep enough pockets. No. As I said, the only no, and, and, and the we, we would be the only one well, doing well, it. That, I, know, I, wouldn't the, mind seeing, <coughs> I wouldn't mind seeing someone work out a figure that, of what exactly we need to put away so that we stay and maintain where we are now. You know what I mean? It's, it's the arc. $1.8 yeah, right. million. Dollars. But even that is... That'll get bigger, won't it? That delta will get bigger. If you don't put it away. Put oh, oh, yeah. I mean, if that's... But at the same time, though, isn't that pay-as-you-go number? 
Yeah, well, how that, did, that's going to catch up. That has to be at in some there point. Somewhere. We're going to be paying more it in the pay as you go model. Depends on you've got that are retired, though. But you got a twenty-three million dollar net. Well, it's already right. there. Yeah, that's well, it's already it's, there. Right, but it's already yeah. there if you want to prepay What's your for the people that are working is, right that's now. That's your cost that right. year. It's gone. Essentially, those are your carrying costs. That's, that's all correct. we're doing. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Carry costs. But, but don't forget that people don't live forever. <laughs> and that, you know, this, you hit an equilibrium point with retirees, as, as mm -hmm. your point, that, you know, well, people like me aren't going to be around 30 years from now. Well, we and all of the teachers my age. Are. Well, I'm not going to be. I'm not sure I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has the, the town, has, they've got this 50000 They haven't set up the trust or anything with anybody yet, have they? Or is, oh, what, what's it's, Mary no, doing with no, it? No, we, we did create the trustees, and the trustees now have to act to uh, start actively that trusteeing. That could be interesting with fifty thousand dollars because it, I think you're going to be limited on what you. Cause nobody oh, wants yeah. to do it with fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Right. Because like, when we set the light departments up, it was a little. Now it's. It's done, uh -huh. and it's it's going on perpetually. It's smaller. So you you aren't paying the for health care for retirees. The light department was required to do this by law. Oh. It, it shows on our balance sheets. Okay. Is a lot of unfunded liability, and if we don't do it, we're not going to look the same as everybody else. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. And I think the li last year, I think the light department was paying about fifty-eight thousand dollars, fifty thousand, fifty-eight, five thousand eight hundred dollars a month. Well, that's not bad. I mean, it's a few. But you don't have a lot of employees. No. Yeah. What are the select? They, they have a lot of retirees. Yeah, we do. They, they have more, a lot more retirees. Some reason than, they do, yeah. yeah. But again, that's going to hit an equilibrium point too. Yeah. What do the uh, what do the selectmen feel about this, or how do they feel about this? Um, they haven't. Uh, they know it's an ominous thing over the horizon, and uh, that's why I wanted to get the uh, actuary in to talk to them. Uh, you know, probably in January, February. So um, it's it's been off their radar screen, but I'm putting it. Well, Back, we need I'm to putting have a it comprehensive on. plan and yeah. approach to this. Yep. Because you can't do it all by yourself. Oh. No, I cannot. But they they will be brought up to speed just as as you have been, and um, yeah, we'll have to. It it will become a a priority. It has to. Yeah. Merry Christmas. W would you let us know when, when you... Oh, absolutely, Because yeah. maybe some of us would like to be oh, at that I'm meeting. I'm sure you would, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, again, any, any other questions for Mike? Mike, is that pretty that's much all, it? That's everything I have. Um, I hope I was helpful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was. Can I have a motion to adjourn, then? So moved. We did have a... Sec uh, on the agenda, we said other business. There's nothing. There's no, there's no other business, yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's it. Opposed? Thank you. Thanks. I thank you.